Welcome to Case of the Week. This week it's a deep dive into the mouth. When you scan a submandibular gland, sometimes you notice that, a bit like a kidney with central echo splitting, you can see there's a little bit of dilatation of the collecting system that's collecting the saliva and channeling it round through to the Wharton's duct. And it raises the question about whether or not there's an obstruction. So when you do a left-right comparison here, you can see the left submandibular gland has a little bit of this sort of sialectasis change, whereas the right side has a normal appearance. If you look more closely, you're going to notice that there is actually, if you like, when you come to the collecting system of a kidney, this would be like going to the pelvic junction, you can see there is a bit more of a distended tube here. And we can see that clearly there's some sialectasis in this gland. Now sometimes this appearance can be because of a vessel passing through the submandibular gland. So make sure you put the Doppler on and make sure that you're not dealing with a vessel. And you can see here with the colour Doppler on and a fairly low pulse repetition frequency of 9.8, you can see that there's actually no flow inside this tube. And so this is making me think that this is in fact part of the collecting system of the submandibular gland. And pulse wave proves that just to prove once and for all that there's no flow there. There's just a little bit of noise cluttered around the baseline here. But there's no way this is a vein or an artery passing through. So the next thing that I do is start to elongate this tube. So just like starting at a kidney at the pelvic junction, I'm going to start to follow it down through the ureter. So I'll start to follow it down through here, and it goes between these two muscles. So the muscle on top is the mylohyoid muscle. The muscle underneath is the hyoglossus muscle. And this is the Warthens duct that comes out and passes between these two structures. There's also another tube that comes out through this same anatomical location, and that's the lingual vein. So again, with Doppler, we've proven that this is definitely not a lingual vein passing through here. We're proving this is part of the collecting system of submandibular gland and this is in fact Warthen's duct that's distended. So I keep following it and I follow it as far as I can into the oral cavity and, and in this case we really do start to see this muscular anatomy beautifully. Mylohyoid, hyoglossus, Here's the Warthen's duct passing through, coming all the way up here into the oral cavity. But unfortunately I still haven't found the reason for the obstruction, so I haven't found the obstructing calculus. It does, however, raise the strong possibility that there is a calculus, and just like the kidneys where a calculus can get stuck at the vesica ureteric junction, we need to go to the equivalent with the submandibular gland, and we need to go to where the Warthen's duct empties into the oral cavity. So this is the next image that I obtain, and you can actually see the calculus really nicely here. And to achieve this image, what I've done is I've asked the patient to sit up on the edge of the bed. I tuck a towel into their shirt so that they don't dribble water down onto their clothes. I give them a glass of water and I ask them to put a little bit of water in their mouth and then lift their chin up so that their mouth becomes, if you like, a shallow swimming pool and that water gets suspended in their mouth. I ask them to put their tongue upwards, so towards the top of their mouth, and that reveals to me the frenulum of the tongue. I then take a hockey stick transducer. So in this case, I've got the 17LH7 transducer, and this fits perfectly in the oral cavity. And very carefully what I do is I place this transducer inside the mouth, perched across the frenulum of the tongue in a transverse plane, and then scan anteriorly and posteriorly slightly until I find the ampulla of the Warthen's duct. And once I find the ampulla, you can see there's a calculus lodged in it here, and that's given me the answer. So this intraoral technique is perfect when you've got a sialectasis of undisclosed origin. And doing this intraoral extension very commonly will provide me with the answer by finding the calculus. Here's another video of the same calculus here, and you can see that it's just sitting in the terminal end of the duct there. The little bright things that you can see swimming about in the fluid there, these are just little air bubbles that are trapped inside the fluid that I've just poured into the mouth there. And you can see the way that I'm actually standing well off. I'm letting the transducer just float in the bath of water here. Now, it does become quite comical sometimes. The patient will put their chin down a bit and sort of dribble liquid onto their shirt or onto the towel that I've placed there. Sometimes they start to gag a little bit and you need to stop, get the transducer out, let them swallow the fluid and then reset and start again. But but it's certainly worthwhile and it will certainly give you the diagnosis that you're looking for. Here's another example where we've got clear sialectasis of the submandibular gland and again I'm following this tube all the way as far as I can towards the oral cavity and I'm not seeing any evidence of any obstructive lesion but clearly there's something causing this obstruction. If you imagine again this is a kidney you can see the degree of hydronephrosis which is called sialectasis on this video and you can see the dilatation of the ureter which of course is the Warthen's duct in this case. You can also see on this video how the lingual vein is sitting right next to the Warthen's duct so we're proving this is the lingual vein this is definitely not 
a venous structure or an arterial structure, this has to be the Wharton's duct, and we can follow it right back into the oral cavity. But once again, we can't see the obstructive cause here. So once again, we do our little trick, and we go inside the mouth, and then bingo, you can see the little obstructive calculus sitting right here at the ampulla of that right-hand side Wharton's duct there. And you can see the left-hand side ampulla has no obstruction, no calculus sitting in it, and this is the answer. So it's very much akin to a vesico-ureteric junction stone in the renal tract system. Here's a couple of other examples that I've got of little stones sitting in the terminal end of Wharton's duct using an intraoral technique. This one had multiple little stones, like lots of little ones, all sort of causing an obstruction. And this one had this great big piece of calculus here that was sticking out. And in fact, once I saw this with the ultrasound, I opened the mouth up and had a good look inside with a torch. And you could actually see the end of this one sticking out. And if I've ever been tempted to grab the end of a stone and pull it out with a pair of tweezers, it was on this day because that would have relieved that calculus quite nicely. But I'm sending it back for the GP to perform that very satisfying duty. Here's another example of another case where I've seen some salectuses and in fact in this case you can see the dilated duct coming all the way up from the bottom here so you can see the dilatation of the duct and then at the terminal end you can see at least one calculus maybe a couple of calculi sitting in that terminal end there. So I think using an intraoral approach can be very very fruitful in these patients and the moment I've got unexplained sialectasis of a submandibular gland and I've chased it as far as I can to the oral cavity using the submental approach then I'm going to go inside the mouth with the transducer and get the answer that we're looking for. I hope this little tip and trick has been handy for you. This has been Case of the Week. Happy scanning and bye for now.